Hi there YouTubers and welcome to uh, Air Gunning for Beginners. Um, this episode is all going to be on scopes, scopes and more scopes. We've got a large selection around here. If you want to look at any of the other videos we've done in the series, please check the links down below and um, we'll list them all down there for you. But today we're going to be talking about scopes and um, the reason behind this is to keep this down really at the beginner level. Um, you might hear somebody turn around and say this scope is 3 to 9 times 40 with no AO, blah blah blah, and what does it all mean? And that's what hopefully I will be able to explain to you today. Now for those more experienced out there, please yeah, you remember where this video is aimed at, it's aimed at the beginners. I may not be using exactly the right technical terms, I may not be explaining this exactly scientifically. Um, and by all means, leave the comments down below, um, just keep them civil and we will all help everybody else out here. So before we go any further, there are obviously different types of scopes you can get. You've got your classic zoom scope that we've all seen and this is probably the one that you're going to be wanting, something like this. But we do also have iron sights, uh, so I'll leave some pictures around here for you to see those. But those are the, anyone that's played uh, Call of Duty or anything like that on the Xbox, you'll know what they are. You also get, I think they're called dioptric scopes. Um, I've probably got that wrong, I'm sure I'll be corrected, but they're the type that you'll see on proper match rifles, match pistols that you'll typically see, for example, at the Olympic Games. And I'll leave some pictures there. You also can get things like this bad boy. And this is a digital scope slash camera slash night sight slash ballistic calculator. And you dial in how far your target is, what range it's at, and it will put the bullet upon bullet at 400 meters quite happily without you having to even think about it. All for the price, oh, that's 700 to 900 pounds. So if you're interested in something like that, I've got some videos on that scope as well. Uh, for you to look at and I'll leave the links for that but today we're going to focus on these scopes here your typical zoom scopes so we've got a second camera set up um, we'll use that to do a bit of a zoom in there and we'll talk about the basics of the scope and how does it all work okay so let's go on to the basics of the scope so here's the front here's the back and here's the covers most scopes will come with covers um, Sometimes they'll be removable like this with a piece of bungee cord in between. Uh, you can shoot with them on if you want because you can see they're clear through and they also have a sunscreen on the other side but typically most people just take them off, they don't shoot with them on. Um, at the front we have what's called the objective and what you might hear is this has an objective of 40 mils. That basically is the diameter across there and that is a 40 mil objective. The other scope I'll show you later has a 50mm objective on it. We have the scope tube down here and then we have the eyepiece at this end. Now the eyepiece you can focus by twisting this section here so that's how you focus it to your eye. And we have at this end here is the zoom dial so we can zoom this scope for example from 3 to 9 times the zoom by just twisting that dial here. So once this is focused to your eye, you can then zoom in and zoom out and everything's nice and hunky-dory. In the middle, as we said, we have the tube. Now the way that a scope works is it has crosshairs that are suspended in the middle of this tube. So if we turn the scope up this way, in the center here, we have a set of crosshairs. So let's think about how that all works. What we have here is our rifle. Your scope is attached to your rifle, it's rigid. Your barrel is attached to your rifle and it's rigid. You fire a shot, your pellet will hit somewhere. How do you line your, your scope up to your, barrel, up to your pellet and where your pellet's hitting? Well, you don't want to be moving your scope, that needs to be rigid. So what you do is you actually move the crosshairs inside the tube of your scope up and down, left and right. And that's how you make sure that the crosshairs line up to where your bullet's hitting and that's called zero in your scope and we'll do a proper video on zero in at another stage so how do you move those crosshairs up and down inside your scope well it's quite simple what you have here is a two turrets and let me get this scope yep yeah, we've got this scope the right way around have we yeah so 
we have two turrets. And most times, most of the time, these things come with covers, especially the cheaper ones. They have covers like so. If we look inside there, we can see there's a dial. So if we want to move the scope up and down, we get a screwdriver or a long thumbnail or something and just turn that left and right, up and down, and you'll hear it click as you do it. And that will move the crosshairs up and down inside the scope tube, which then allows you to line the scope up to where your bullet hits. If you want to do it left and right, you do it the same here. And these are called the turrets. The one that moves up and down is called elevation. One that moves it left and right is called windage. And that's how you zero your scope. And once you're finished, you replace your caps back on, like so, and you're good to go. And that is the basics of a scope. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on now to a different scope and look at the characteristics of that one and see where the differences are. So this is a different type of scope. Obviously, it's a lot, lot bigger. Okay, so as with the other scope, we have covers, and these covers are called the flip or type flip up covers. And you can see these are clear as well. Sometimes these are magnetic or more expensive scopes. Sometimes these are just pop with little catches. And they can be removed, like so. Same on the back. Little pop-up. And they can be removed as well. This scope also has on it an optional sun shield. So on a really, really bright sunny day, you can put this on and it helps reduce the amount of light coming in and the reflections and the glare that you might get. Okay, so let's go back to the scope and we'll zoom back in here. And we can see quite a lot of the same things. Here's our objective lens. Now this one has much more expensive lenses in it, better coatings to give better light quality in here. And this scope costs a lot, lot more. The light still comes down the tube, is focused, and to the eyepiece. The eyepiece can be adjusted with a focus here. We also have, in here, we'll have our crosshairs out there. Now these crosshairs on this model, with a common rage nowadays, is to have them illuminated. So I can change this between naught and five degrees of intensity of red or green. So instead of just looking at pieces of wire in my crosshairs, I can look at them in pretty colors. It's useful sometimes in, night, in daytime. To be honest, I personally am not a great fan. All that happens is that in here is a watch battery which controls it and powers it and I forget to switch it off after I've been using it and I come back a couple of days later and the battery's flat and it's no use. In fact, I think the battery's flat in this one. Uh, it's a nice to have feature and you'll find a lot of scopes but don't be fooled by all the marketing about it. You probably won't use it that much. Uh, it's not just nice to have. Now, if I look at this scope, you notice now I've got three turrets. I've got my elevation. Now, this one is clickable by hand. You might just about hear that. And it's a little defined click each time I turn it. There's no covers on this one, so I can just adjust this one on the fly without having to take covers on and off. My windage, exactly the same. I can click and change that. But I've got a third turret. Now, what could that possibly be for? So this is now where we need to start talking about adjustable optics or AO scopes. So what is adjustable, adjustable object, objectives? Basically, it is a phenomenon of light called parallax. So when that light travels, it travels in straight lines. And light will meet different focal points, in other words, focus at different points through an objective of lenses, depending on how far away it is. So if you are not truly lined up with a simple scope like this that has no adjustable optics, then its aim point is going to be differing depending on how far away the object is that you're shooting at. So if I'm shooting at 25 metres, this may very well hit bang centre. But if I shoot at 50 metres, even if I've corrected for, wind, for elevation and windage, and distance, I could still miss due to a thing called parallax. And that is how an object is focused compared to the crosshairs and my eyepiece. So to get around that, what you can do is change the focus of a rifle depending upon the distance. So the focus of the scope depends on the distance. And the way you do that is by changing the front objective lens by twisting it in and out, which effectively moves it backwards and forwards. 
The beauty of that is that when you've actually focused at this end, you know how much you've turned it, therefore you know what the distance is. So these have graduation scales on here. In this case it goes from 15 metres all the way up to 200 and infinity. So let me explain why this is useful. If I have a target and I see that my target is out there, now it's focused to my eye already, but if I then look out and see a target, let's say at 50 metres, it's out of focus. I then turn the parallax or the AO and I turn it until it's in focus and it should appear in focus when that top dial reads 50. And it does, they generally do work. You can also use this then as a range finder or a semi range finder. You know that once I've got something in focus, read the dial and it tells me my distance. And it is pretty good at that. It will tell you that within a good five to 10 meters, which generally is good enough for air rifling. Now, there's two ways of doing that. On the front, or in this case, on the side. So this bit here, which I'm turning, is actually moving the lens elements up the front here to put it in focus for parallax. And then I can read off the scale what range I'm at. So that's extremely handy to have on the scope. So I would certainly say that if you're looking for your first scope, certainly do look for one that's got AO. And you sometimes see scopes with these great big wheels on the, on the side of them and you think, what's that all about? All it is is a plastic covering over this and it's just a big wheel that just makes it easier to turn in finer, smaller moment, movements. It is exactly the same. They could take that wheel off and actually use their fingers and do it this way. It just looks fancy and it's easier to turn. And you'll find that a lot of the target shooters, the field sports, H, uh, the field sports um, shooters out there doing it for competition have these great big wheels. And they're literally, they're looking through the scope and they're just turning that wheel until it's crystal clear focus. And then they can read the range and then they know what to do with their pallet when they're shooting, whether to lift it up, down, left or right. So that is the basics of a scope. Realistically, there's not that much to it. The more glass, the better the glass, the better the lenses, the better the coatings on the lenses, then the more expensive the scope, uh, the scope will be. So, what else do we need to talk about with scopes? Well, we've got to be able to get this scope mounted onto our rifle somehow, and it needs to be good and it needs to be secure. So how's that done? Well, that's done with these things called mounts. And if we just bring that in, we can see that this is a mount. And you can see that these scopes have two mounts. So let's bring in our rifle again and take a look and we can see the two mounts here that hold this on. Now the two types of mounts you can get are what are called Picatinny and uh, dovetail types. So it's difficult to show but I will put some pictures up and show you but let's see if we can do that on this camera and we can just about, no, let's do the back end of that one there, we can just about make out that dovetail where the scope is sitting on. And I'll put a picture of dovetail up so you can see that. But what you have here then is you need to pick the right scope mount system. In this case, this is dovetail. That will clamp onto a dovetail. And the dovetail has a certain thickness on here. These then go over, slides onto the dovetail, and then you tighten up with the screws to clamp the rifle, the scope to the rifle. The other type that you'll get is what's called Picatinny. So let's bring in this bad boy to show you Picatinny. And if we take a look at that, you can see this like railway track at the top. And if you look in the previous video that we did on the beginners, you'll see we'll talk about Picatinny and dovetail on there. And if you have a Picatinny rail that you're mounting your scope to, then you will need what's called Picatinny scope mounts, like so. And these clamp on and then of course just tighten up. And you'll need two. You'll need one for the front and one for the back of the scope. Now, your scope mounts will come in different heights, what's called profile. You'll get low profile, which uh, I think that one's a low profile. You can get medium profile, which that one looks like a medium profile. And let's bring another rifle up. And you can get high profile, you can see how high these mounts are. Now, these particular profiles you're going to need, depending on your rifle. 
So on this rifle we can see, we can see we've got to clear a magazine area. So if my scope was low profile mats, I couldn't get my scope on it and put the magazine on. Whereas this particular rifle, I can get away with lower profile mounts on here as well. So these mounts, you really do have to think about and match them to your scope. Because scopes also come in different diameters. So this is a 20 mil tube, a 20 or 25. They come in 20, 25 and 30 mils. I think this is a 20 mil tube because it's a cheap scope here. And this is the diameter of the inside of the tube which means you've got to get your scope mounts at the right size. You've got to get, so that when you take them off, let's just show you how this works. So we'll take this here, take the screw out. They have to be the right size. So you can't use undersized ones or oversized, otherwise your scope, the mounts won't fit or they'll be too loose. That clamps around the side, as we can see there, and then we can just, we just drop that on and off. You can see that there, and we just drop that on and off and then we tighten it down with the screws. Whereas this one is a 30 mil diameter, which means it has different size scope mounts. So the 30, the 25 ones will not fit. As you can see, you can see that they're, they're not fitting at all. They aren't even going around the circumference of the tube. So it's important that you get the right profile of scopes that you want, low, medium or high, it's important that you get the right diameter to fit the diameter of your scope and it's also I'd say important on how they attach to the rails so this this one here this has two attachments per two screws to clamp it onto the rail which is quite good I have seen some that I've only got one screw on there and obviously it's cheaper quality that you're getting. So I would certainly say that don't go overboard, but spend a decent amount of money. Yeah, you know, go for a medium price range on your scope rail mounts. Now sometimes they'll come with the scope itself, but um, certainly don't skimp out on those. So that's how to attach it up to your rifle. So let's talk about how these scopes are designated. So you'll hear the term, Three to nine to 40. That's written on this scope here. What does it mean? Well, the three is the base zoom. The dash to nine means it is the maximum zoom. So it zooms from three to nine. So this is a three to nine 40. 40 is the diameter of the objective lens. And that's pretty much how it works. Three to nine to 40. This one here is an AGS. And this is a 6 to 24, 50. So from 6 zoom to 24 zoom, 50 objective lens. And that's how they're named. And this one also has it after it, AO, which means adjustable optics. This one on the rifle here, this one here is a, let's have a look, it's a, this is a 6 to 24, and I think it's a 45. Yeah, 6 to 24, 45, and it's a Tasco scope. Uh, so that means it's 6 zoomed to 24, and it's a 45 objective light gathering, and it's an AO because it has the parallax adjustment on it as well. So hopefully that explains the scopes themselves and how they're named. So the next question really comes down to is, <coughs> what type of scope should I get? Well. As a beginner, I would not be looking to spend any more than 100, maybe 120 pounds on a scope. Now, a lot of people are gonna argue with me on this one, but I'm gonna say that because you're looking at your first rifle, you're new to the sport, you're probably not wanting to spend too much money, and I'm gonna assume that you've not been given a free scope with your rifle as part of a package. A lot of people will race out there and go looking on the internet and the first thing they'll do is they'll come across eBay and they'll come across China. <clears throat> I personally would say do not buy any scope off eBay or China if it is the first time you're buying scopes. Because you don't know what you're looking for, the chances are you're going to get ripped off. There are people out there who have brought scopes from China or from other people on eBay and have been perfectly happy with them. I'm well aware of that. 
but let's just play the game of risk here. You don't know what you're getting. We all know what it's like. You're going to end up with a pile of junk, especially if it's advertised at 20 quid. To put something like this together properly costs more than 20 quid, especially when you've got to ship it around the world. You're going to get a scope that basically isn't put together well. The crosshairs are going to wobble all over the place because they're not solidly attached. You can't adjust it very well. The, the glass is made of cheap glass or worst case plastic and it's like a, a toy binoculars as a kid. We all remember those toy plastic binoculars. Never as good as your dad's were they? There's a good reason. They only cost a couple of bucks to make. So I personally wouldn't go off to China and stuff like that. Um, I would certainly be going to uh, one of your local gun shops or looking around on clubs, on the forums, and finding somebody that can trust. But I would be looking to spend up to, I would say, a hundred pounds, a hundred bucks, on a scope. And what I would be looking for is something that is, say, from three or six zoom up to, say, twelve zoom maximum, and preferably with AO, so with adjustable optics, either on the side or on the front. And why do I say that? The big mistake that newbies do is they'll go out and think, well, God, I had the highest magnification I can. And it's not the case. Trust me, I've been there and I've done it. Why do you think I've got a 24 scope, zoom scope on mine? The only time, the problem is, is that when you zoom in to 24, you're so far zoomed in that you can't see anything else other than a small part of the target you're aiming at. You lose what's called a field of view. So if I'm out at three times or three times zoom in a scope, I can see quite a lot through that scope. I can see to the left, see to the right. If I zoom all the way into 24, I can't see anything apart from a part of that target. If that target suddenly moves, I don't know if it's gone left, if it's gone right, and then I'm going to be hunting around looking for it, and it's extremely difficult. Also, <clears throat> the higher your magnification, the more it's going to enhance the wobbles and the shapes that you've got. And of course, being a newcomer, you're going to have wobbles and shakes in your arms because if you're not used to shooting. And all that's going to happen is that high zoom is going to make that so much harder for you to learn consistency. I would quite happily say that even a 3 to 9 scope, maybe not as cheap and nasty as this one, this is probably only 20 quid's worth because it's a freebie with a rifle, but a 3 to 9 scope or 3 to 12 scope on top of your rifle as with nice clear optics on it, with an adjustable AO um, parallax adjuster on it, will be perfect. You'll still have that wide field of view, so you can find your target easy enough. You'll be able to zoom it into about nine times zoom if you want to check where pellet holes are going, and that. it's not going to introduce so much wobble. Another reason why you don't want high, high zoom is, especially if you're hunting, you need that field of view. So, for example, you're looking for rats. You're at night, you see a rat. You don't want to be lining up there at 24 zoom, trying to zoom in on a rat that you've got no chance and you're hunting all over the place for it and it's moved. If you're out at free zoom and you can see the rat in the field of view, you can put your crosshairs over. You've not got so much wobble on your rifle, you can pull the trigger. That's the beauty of it all. You'll find that the higher zooms are great for things like bird watching while you're waiting for your quarry to appear or if you're doing long distance target shooting, they are very good for that. But for your general hunting, most people don't use that much zoom on there. So don't fall into that trap, especially if you're just plinking around. Um, you'll find that most of the rifles you'll get, your scopes that you're getting nowadays as well, will have the um, illumination on there. Don't worry about it, it's nice to have. You don't have to use it. You can use the scope without it. In fact, all of the ones that I've got, I don't bother using it because the batteries are flat because I forgot to switch them off. Um, what else would I say on oh, scopes on there? Yeah, for your first scope, like I said, typical brands I would be looking at would be things like SMK, AGS, Nickel Sterling, Tasco. Those sort of lower, yeah, they're not super, super cheap. They uh, are ranging, I'd say, from £50, pounds, 50 bucks to £120, pounds, £120, bucks. that sort of range I'd say look at. If you're looking at a scope that's looking like that and it's less than £30, bucks, run away, because it's a pile of crap, unless it's from a friend who's given it to you for a cheap, cheap price. And certainly, as a beginner, don't even bother looking at the scopes that are five, six, seven hundred pounds dollars you know, there's scopes out there, you've got a Carl Zeus glass in them and everything, and they do all these wonderful things, they're coated in 
super kryptonite and they cost two and a half thousand dollars. Trust me, at this stage you don't need them. In fact, most shooters out there don't need them on there. So I think I've covered quite a lot there um, about scopes. Now obviously there's a lot lot more that you can learn about scopes. Of course go and do some of your own research on that. This video is just really to give you some ideas, to give you some indications what the parts of the scopes, what type of scopes, the mounts that you need, what the different numbers mean on the scope etc. Um, so hopefully this video has proved to be useful to you. If it has, please give me your thumbs up and your likes. Uh, don't forget to share this video, leave your comments down below if you've got any questions. This is a big, big, big topic, but I'm sure people down below will, uh, will um, answer the questions and I'll try to as well. And I'd like to say thank you and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much. Goodbye.